Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Mornings with Lady T Talks. I pray you guys are having a good day. Happy Monday. Happy Mindset Monday. Good morning and welcome <clears throat> to Mornings with Lady T Talks. I am excited to be here with you on today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you come in, say hi, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Excuse me, depending on what time zone you are watching from, share this on your timeline, tag somebody in this video. Good morning. Let me know where you're tuning in from on TikTok. Um, also, if you are watching on any platform, we are live on Instagram, Facebook, and um, TikTok. Let me know if this is your first time. Let me know if um, you are a consistent watcher. I would love to know who's watching my videos on a consistent basis. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I am excited to be here with you on today. I pray that you guys are blessed and that you're having a blessed day every single morning. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself to all my newcomers. My name is Talana um, Bard Allen, and I'm a transformational life relationship and health and wellness coach. And I come for transformation. I'm a change agent and a problem solver and I love helping people um, live their best life and have the life that they dreamed of living um, every single day and it is definitely possible for you to live that life um, if you just apply yourself um, to some simple principles and that's the um, word of God so thank you guys so much for tuning in today every single broadcast I start with our affirmations our confessions I am a firm believer that what you speak, you will have. What you say out of your mouth is what you'll produce. If you say the right things, you'll produce the right things. If you say the wrong things, then you'll have the wrong thing. So what you say really matters. So this is just a tidbit of my confessions, but I do it with you every single morning because I want to spark your, your life. I want to get you to thinking on what you speak, what you say is what you're going to have. So if you don't have any confessions, you are more than welcome to have these. Write them down, record this, come back and watch the read play um if you're on tiktok you don't have that ability so you got to come on and follow me over there on instagram or, or facebook so you can watch the replay or follow me on youtube i am on youtube and i upload the videos every single day all right so i am what god says i am i can do all that god says i can do i'm not weak i'm strong i'm not bound i'm free i'm not sick i'm healed i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am living on top I am prospering in all that I do. I am thriving and flourishing in my mind, in my business, on my job, in my family, in my relationships, and in my life. I am growing into the person that God has designed me to be. I am a money magnet. Money flows to me with ease. I attract millions. I am able to give more because I have more to give. I am healed. I am delivered and I am set free. I am whole and complete in Christ. I forgive easily and quickly. I am grateful for this day. I am a believer. This is my confession and I'm sticking to it. What do you confess every day? What are you saying over your life? What are you saying over your family? What are you saying over your business? What are you saying? What are you speaking in your life? You have the power and the ability to change your now, to change your future by speaking the words of God over your life by saying the right words. If you, you might be struggling, you might be struggling in your finances. Do not say I'm broke. Say I'm in between blessings. God is blessing me right now. I have more than enough. God is supplying all my need. I don't care that they're there to pick up your car. I don't care that the eviction notice is on your door. You will have whatsoever you saith, saith the Lord. You will have whatsoever you, your words are prophesying your future. You have to understand that if you're speaking damnation, you are speaking it to yourself. It is no one's fault that we are where we are at today, but our own by the words that we have spoken. Yes, I hear you. People have spoken against me. People have said this. Absolutely. People have. But it's only when we agree with what the people say, if it's going to come to pass. You can call me crazy all day. I know that I'm not crazy. I'm not going to agree with you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to tell you I'm not crazy. I'm, and I'm going to tell you who I am. Why? Because we tell people who we are by how we walk and talk ourselves. So if we're talking crazy. People are going to think it's okay for them to talk to us that way. If we're talking broke, busted, and disgusted, then people, we're going to attract people that are broke, busted, and disgusted. That people, they, um, 
that are like us. We attract people like ourselves. So this week, I'm talking about the power of love. Will the real you please stand up? Listen to me. I am so serious about this because the real people that we are supposed to be have been lying dormant long enough. The people that God has called us to be, the woman, the man that God has called you to be has been laying dormant long enough. It is time for you to stand up and be who God has called you to be, to surround yourself with people who God need or want in your life that are going to help you move where you need to be. I'm a firm believer that who you are connected with is, is crucial and imperative for you being who God wants you to be. If you are connected to people who are talking the way that you don't want to talk, that are living a life that you don't want to live, that are broke, busted, and disgusted, that don't have no faith, that don't believe in nothing, that don't believe in God, that don't believe grease is greasy, those are the kind of people you do not need to be around. And let me just say this, just because they're your family members does not mean that you have to be around them. You you can still love them, you can still support them, but they do not have to be in your ear 24-7. I did a post the other day and it says, who you, who you are connected to matters. If you are not for me, then you are against me. Listen to me, a lot of times we think that we got to hang around people just because they're this person, they're that person. No, the people that you entertain, the things that you entertain, the things that you watch, the things that you listen to are going to give credence to you that are going to, it's filling you. It's, it's what's motivating you. Are you listening to the right things? Are you putting the right things in your spirit? Listen, I am determined to live the life that God called me to live. I'm surrounding myself with people who are going where I want to go or who are going or, or who are where I want, where I want to go, right? It is important. It is crucial that you stand up and you're First of all, your God-given right to be who God called you to be and not allow this world to dictate to you what you're supposed to do. Not allow people to dictate to you what you're supposed to do. Your main person that you need to please is God. Is God pleased with how you talk? Is God pleased with how you think? Is God pleased with how you feel? Is God pleased how you treat yourself and how you treat others? All of that matters in order for us to be who God called us to be. Will the real you please stand up? Will you come to the forefront and start speaking to your destiny. Start speaking to your future. Start commanding your life to be what God called it to be. Start walking in love. Start walking in peace. Start walking in joy. Will the real you please stand up? Well, you might say, who am I? I don't even know who I am. Well, go into the word of God and find out who you are. Find out what God says about you. And that's what you say. Give agreement to the right things. Speak what God wants you to speak over your life. Don't just speak what you think you should speak. They say there's a saying that says, if you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Well, that's what I'm telling you to do in this season of your life. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Why? Because we're going to speak the wrong things out of our mouth. And when we speak the wrong things out of our mouth, then we have to go back and eat that. Because the Bible clearly says that we reap what we sow, right? We're sowing the wrong seeds. We're going to get the wrong seeds, right? We're going to get the wrong harvest. We want to make sure that what we're putting in the ground are seeds of faith, that are seeds of love. Love, that are seeds of joy, that are seeds of peace, that are seeds that we want to spring up in our life. What do you want to see your life look like? Where do you want to see your life go? Do you want to see your life thrive and flourish? Every single morning, I tell myself, I am thriving and flourishing in my life, in my business, in my relationships, in my finances. I am what God says I am. God says I'm wealthy, therefore I'm wealthy. My bank account might not look like it. My bank account might dictate that I'm broke, but I don't speak by what I see. I speak by what the word of God says until it manifests. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things that are not seen. I might not see it working. I might not understand how it's going to work. It is not my job and your job to figure out how it's going to work. It is our job to believe the report of the Lord. It is our job to believe that what God says he will bring it to pass. It is our job to believe that if God did it before, he'll do it again. He is not a respecter of persons. If he does it for you, he'll do it for me. If he does it for me, he'll do it for you. He has enough money. He has enough power to give you your dreams and my dreams. He has enough victory in Christ Jesus that we can have the victory. We don't have to walk around defeated. We don't have to walk around with our heads hung down, not believing in ourselves, not knowing who we are. Will the real you please? 
please stand up? Will the real Talana please stand up? Will the real person watching this video or watching the replay please stand up? Stand up in your most holy faith. Stand up and knowing that he that begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will do exactly what it says. I don't care what it looks like. Because we look through our natural eyes. We look through the natural. We look through our two eyes or our four eyes. However many eyes we got. We look at things in the natural. But God is commanding us to look at things in the spirit. We are spirit beings. Once we've given our life to Christ, we are now spirit beings. We, are, we should be spirit fed, spirit led, spirit fed, and what God wants us to be. Will the real you please stand up and be who God called you to be? Will you walk in the, the in the way that God wants you to walk in? Will you talk the talk that God wants you to talk? Will you be who God wants you to be now and be nothing else? Will you, will you decide today that I will stop taking a back seat to what the devil wants me to do and stand up and be who God called me to be, right? I said also in my post, if you're not for me, then you are against me, right? So you have to understand that everybody's not for you. Everybody's not in your corner. Everybody's not rooting you on. And what you say to me in my face may be one thing, but what you do behind my back is something else. If you really love me, if you really honor me, if you really respect me, then you won't kick me in the back when I'm down. You won't talk about me and run my name down in the street. If you really love me, you won't kick me down when I'm down. You lift me up. The Bible tells us to love one another. There is power in love. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord in heaven and earth and underneath the earth. So it does not matter what I'm going through, love will lift me up. Love will undergird me. Love will encourage me. Love will, te will push me. Love will tell me that I'm great. Love will tell me that I can do it. Love will push me. It will not kill me. Love does not hurt. Look out for the t-shirt is coming. Love doesn't hurt. Love is not supposed to be beaten upside your head. We stay in relationships longer than we should because we feel like they love me. If they loved you, then they would treat you better. If they loved you, then they would put you first. Well, put God first and put you second or put you third, wherever you fall in the equation. My point of what I'm saying is love does not hurt. Love is not supposed to stab you in the back. That's not what love is. That's not what love is, y'all. Love does not do that. There's a bishop, Bishop Eugene Long says, love is not what it says, it is what it does. You love me by what you do, not by what you say. Because I can say more in five minutes than I can live out in a lifetime. Let me tell you something. Love is powerful. The Bible says love is stronger than death. Love can defeat anything when you allow the love of God in your heart like it's supposed to be. I'm going to go to two scriptures today and I'm going to try to break it down to the best of my ability, but I'm going to read it out of the Amplify and I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. And there is no way in the world that I'm even going to think that I'm going to get that far today. So you're going to have to tune in all week to get this message in its entirety, okay? Romans 12, 9 through 21 out of the Amplified Bible. And let me tell you something. I'm talking about the real you. I'm going to teach you who you are. I'm going to show you who you are through the word of God. So you do not want to miss a day because when you understand who you are and whose you are, you become undefeated. You become the undefeated champion of the world. You become who God wants you to be. When you really know who you are, you are a child of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. You are who God called you to be and you have power and authority to operate how God wants you to operate. He created you in his image and after his likeness. And he told you to dominate. We should be dominating the world. We should take over the world. The believers, the, 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 the sons and the daughters should be taking over the world. We should be dominating. We literally make God look bad with our broke, busted, and disgusted selves. <laughs> I'm just telling you what God love and that's the truth. We're walking around here talking about we serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords, but we don't have money to pay our bills. We don't have the love that we need in our heart. We're not living the life that God wants us to be. Will the real sons and daughters of God stand up? Will you stand up in your most holy faith? Will you be who God called you to be? Will you stand on his word when everything else around you is falling? Will you decree and declare what God said over your life? That it is so. Whatever God said is done. That's what I 
God choose to believe. And if you struggle with your belief, the Bible gives us a remedy. He says, help thou my unbelief. I pray every day. Lord, help my unbelief. Wherever I'm struggling in in, in my belief, help me to believe you. Help me to trust you. Help me to love you. Help me to surrender myself to you. It is you and you alone who I want to please. Are you pleased with my life? Are you pleased with my talk? Are you pleased with my walk? I want you to be pleased with my love life. And I'm not talking about with a man or a woman. I'm talking about my love language with God. Is he pleased with how I'm loving him? Is he pleased with how I'm loving my neighbors? Is he pleased with how I'm walking, talking, and teaching the word of God. Is God pleased with you today? Only you and God know that. God has not always been pleased with me. I can tell you right now because I could be a hot mess. I can get an attitude at the drop of a hat. I can, well, I used to, let me say it like that because I'm not no longer that person. I used to be touchy. I used to be fretful. I used to be fearful, but I have declared and decreed that I am who God says I am. And when God gives you a word and when God gives you a promise, you can take that promise to the bank, knowing that God will cash it out when it's time. Listen to me. Let's go to Romans 12, 9 and 9. First verse 9. Love is, and this is out of the Amplified. Love is to be sincere and active. The real thing without guile or hypocrisy. Listen to me. When you really are walking in love, you cannot walk around here high and mighty thinking you're all that. Listen to me. You have to be sincere and active. What did I say? Love does not kick you in the back when you're down. Love does not hurt you. Love does not lie on you. Love that, That's not what love does. But learn to be honest. Learn to, and sometimes you got to swear to your own hurt and change not. It might be embarrassing to say, this is the person I was. I was a treacherous so-and-so. I used to do this. I used to do this. That might be embarrassing. But when you decide to name the name of Christ, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is who I was. That is not who I am now. My address has to forever change and I will not move back into that house. Some things you just got to let go. You got to learn how to be sincere in your love. You got to learn how to activate the power of God's love. You got to learn that it is a real thing, that God's love is real, that God loves you with everything in him. And he is looking for every single opportunity and every single way to bless you. He's looking for how he can pour his blessings in your life, but he can't bless us until we walk in him. Give ourselves over to him. He wants to bless us. He wants to meet every need. He wants to, but he will not violate his word by doing it because we want him to do it. Because we're asking him to do it. We have to do something too. It is conditional. We can't just do, we can't just live this life any way we want. Those of you who got children, and for those of you who don't, think about it if you had children, okay? You got a child and you, and you, and, and you ain't hurting. You, you living pretty good, right? You living in the house of your dreams, driving a car of your dreams, bank account is overflowing. You know, you living that life. And you got a child that is not doing what they're supposed to do. You said, do, you know, you give them some specific things. You don't train them up, right? But they out there doing what they want to do. Are you going to be inclined to just bless them? Every time they call you, mom, I need this. Dad, I need this. You just going to be inclined to just keep giving, 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 giving? No, you're going to put stipulations. You're going to be like, you need to go get a job. You need to do this. You need to do that. Now, if they're doing everything that they need to do and they need you, you're going to help them. They call you, say, listen, mom, I've been saving this and that. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm a little short this month. Guess what you're going to do? What you need? You're going to help them. You're going to do everything you can to help them. That's how God feels about us. When we're doing every single thing we can, we're we're obeying his word. We're praying. We're fasting. We're trusting God. We're reading his Bible. We're getting up. We're we're spending time with him. We're doing all this. And we're saying, God, I need your help. God, I want to love you more. God God is going to do what you want to do. But if your kids is cursing you out, treating you any old kind of way, coming and stealing from you, you're not going to be inclined to help them. You're going to be like, "Uh, you need to get yourself together. Go to rehab. Go do this. Go do the other. You'll do whatever you have to do to help your child be successful. When your child needs you, you're going to go to bat for them. God is even more. We can only wrap around our mind around so much, but God is 10 times or 20 times more than what we could even think. And he is looking for every avenue, every way to bless us. He said, how can I bless them? How can I get them to see what I'm talking about? How can I get them to love my word more? How can I get them to want more than me? He's looking for every opportunity to do it. 
When you think about it in the next, he wants to give you the keys to the kingdom. He wants to give you the house of your dreams. He wants you to drive the car of your dreams. He wants you to have enough money in the bank account. He wants you to have healthy relationships. He wants your family to be successful. He wants increase in your life. God wants to give you his very best, but he cannot give you his very best because you are not doing what you are required to do. You are speaking crazy stuff. You are doing what you want to do. You're not obeying his word. You don't understand that love is powerful, that love is stronger than death, that when you cry out to the savior he hears you okay so love is to be sincere and active a real thing without guile or hypocrisy hate what is evil detest all ungodliness do not tolerate wickedness why are we tolerating things in our life that we should not tolerate why are we tolerating the devil beating us outside the head lying to us lying to us saying whatever he wants to say to us telling us that we're nothing telling us that god telling us all these lies why do we believe the wicked enemy why are we believing evil if we have the op, the time to sit here and believe evil things, to believe what the devil is, why don't we, why don't we just say for 30 days, for 90 days, I'm going to try God and take him at his word. For 90 days, I'm going to apply myself. For 90 days, I'm going to do something different. For 90 days, I'm going to just read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to do what his word says. I bet you if you took 90 days of your life or even 30 days of your life and decided that today is the last day that I will do what I want to do. I will trust God. I will obey him and if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins all you have to do is repent all you got to do is ask God to come in your heart all you got to do is believe that he is who he says he is he'll come in your heart it's just that easy it is just that easy to accept Jesus into your heart because what I'm telling you if you don't know him and the pardon of your sins it will not happen for you and I'm not here to be a doom and gloom preacher. I'm here to give you a word to encourage you. But this is only for people that believe that Jesus is who he is, who he says he is. It's only for people that decide that I'm going to just love God. Let me tell you something. Life is too short to sit up here and keep playing around. If you don't look at the world and see the shape that the world is in today and decide that you're going to serve this awesome God. Let me tell you something. You are missing out on God's best for you. God loves you so much and he wants to give you everything that your heart desires. God wants you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God wants you to have so much more than what you got. We are not supposed to be living from paycheck to paycheck. We are not supposed to be living on borrowed time. We are supposed to live on top. We are supposed to live in the things that God wants us to live in. He wants to give us his very best. We don't serve a God that don't got nothing, that don't got no power, that don't got no, no means. We serve a God that got all power in his hands. When he, when he took keys to death, hell, and the grave, he took everything. He's a God that got everything. Let me tell you something. You got to hate what's evil. You can't love evil things. You got to hate it just like God hated it. Now, this is the thing that I struggle with because I, I, feel, I, I just want to love, 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 love. But sometimes God hates it. God hates evil. So then we got to hate evil. If evil is happening around us, get away from it. Don't think, feel like you got to stay because, oh, well, you know, this is my people. Well, guess what? Your people going to hell if they don't get it together. You're my people too. We got to live a life that people want, that they envy. They say, I don't know what Talana's doing, but I want it. I want in. Are we living that life that people are looking at and saying? Because people aren't going to pick up the Bible. They're not going to pick up this Bible and say, oh, let me read it. Let me study it. No, they're going to say, oh, you said you saved? Hmm. Oh, you saved, huh? Oh, but you ain't got no money. Oh, you saved? Oh, but mm, look how you handle that situation. But you saved, right? We we should live such a life that the world wants what we got. That's the love of God. Will the real you please stand up? Will you stand up in your most holy faith? Will you stand up and show the world who God really is? Not this fake person that people are showing. Not a pe not a picture that hangs on a wall. God is more than a picture that hangs on a wall. God is great. God is good. God is mighty. God is powerful. God is strong. God is all that we need him to be. He is El Shaddai. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is more than enough. He has everything that I need. Everything that I need is in God. Will we? St will the real you? Will the real Talana? Will the real you please stand up and be who God calls you to be? Or will you keep battling your need to the enemy and loving evil instead of hating it 
Hold on tightly to what is good. Be devoted to one another authentically, brotherly affection as members of one family. Listen to me. I don't care what color you are. You could be black. You could be white. You could be Puerto Rican. You could be Mexican. You could be Japanese. I don't care. We are part of the body of Christ. There is no differentiation in what we look like when we look at the body of Christ. We have to stop looking at one another at the color of our skin and judging one another and being hateful of one another. We have to hate evil. If my brother that's Japanese is loving God and loves God and cares about God and is saved, then we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. Stop hating on one another. Stop kicking one another in the back and allow the real you, the love that God created you to be, to stand up in the earth. We need people to stand up in the earth and be who God called them to be and stop being acting like we're serving somebody that don't got no power to keep us. I know I'm talking right. Put amen in the chat. I know I'm talking right. As family members, give preference to one another in honor. We have an honor problem. We don't want to honor nobody. We don't want to love nobody. We want to hate people. They get on my nerves. They, they don't understand them. They, 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 and we go walking around like this. God wants us to love. He wants us to love. He wants us to walk in love. He wants us to talk in love. He wants us to act in love. He wants us to be who he called us to be. Just like him. He's tired of us just walking around here always in lack, always not having, not having the love, not having the support. Well, I don't got nobody around me for years. When I tell you for years, and I'm not just saying this to talk, for years, I felt like I was by myself. I was married. I got four kids, four sons with four four wives, that four daughters, so eight kids all together. I got six grandkids and some on the way. And I felt alone because I didn't have the people around me that I needed around me that were going to support me, that weren't going to encourage me, that were going to that were going to push me into my destiny. Who you are around, who you are connected to matters. If you're around people that don't particularly care for you, that don't really love you, how can you feel uplifted? You can't. You're going to be like, oh my God, nobody really loves me. People are, listen to me. I prayed for years. I prayed and prayed and prayed. I said, Lord, I need a sisterhood. Lord, I need somebody in my life that can speak into my life. I prayed for years, but I didn't wait till he showed up. I worked on myself. I worked on that when God gave it to me, I could receive it. I had to work on, let me go back to my other notes. I had to become the person that I wanted to be around. Who did I want to be around? Who did I want to surround myself with? That's what I had to become. What does this mean? You have to become the kind of person that you want to attract. Who do you want around you? Who do you want in your tribe? Who do you want in your corner? Who's there? Who's supposed to be there for you? That's what you want. You want people that are around you, that love you, that care about you, that will support you, that will push you, that will encourage you, that will tell you who you are, that will believe in you. That's what you want in your life. People that you actually want to associate with. We all that we all want to go somewhere in life. We all want more out of life. You got to find somebody that's doing what you want to do and surround yourself with them. Get around them. Get in their presence. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Do stuff that can help you get to where you want to go. You can't follow people that ain't going nowhere. You can't because you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to keep going around the same circle. In order to go up, you got to find somebody to where you want to go. People who will bring out the best in you and not the worst. The, listen, we have to love everybody. The Bible commands us to don't say if they're treating you nice or not. It says we have to love everybody. And there's a prescription for those people that don't love us, that don't care about us, that lie on us, that despitefully. There's a scripture. Go to Matthew 5, It will give you the scripture. That's the scripture to help you deal with them. But I'm talking about surrounding yourself with people, the God kind of people, People that can believe in you, that can love you right where you're at. That doesn't judge you. That's not kicking you in the back. That's saying, oh, oh, you ain't nobody. Oh, you this. Oh, you that. Oh, you. No. I see you for how God sees you. And I asked God to change my lenses. I got to wear glasses. 
But I don't want to look at you through my natural eyes. I want to look at you through the spirit. I want to see you how God sees you because it makes it easy to love you. Will the real you please stand up? I had to look at my life and see who I was surrounded by. Am I surrounded by people that are pushing me, that are making me want to do better? Am I surrounded by people who want more, who, who want more from life than me? People who are, or am I hanging around people that are worse than me, that are sucking the life out of me, that are takers, that are just sucking everything from me? Or am I around people that really love me and really want to be a part of what I'm doing and really want to help me build and really want me to be who God wants me to be? Good morning. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Listen to me. <clears throat> are the relationships in your life adding equality at is it equal relationships? Are you giving and they're giving? Are you doing and they're doing? Or are you giving, 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 giving? They're taking, 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 sucking the life out of you. It should be mutually beneficial. Our relationships should be mutually beneficial to one another. We should love one another with the love of Christ. When you hurt, I hurt. When you cry, I cry. When you laugh, I laugh. We are one united front. It doesn't matter. Will the real you please stand up and be who you're supposed to be and actually really love like God commanded us to love? Will you do that? Will you add value to those people around you? Will you add value to their life? Will you love them unconditionally? Will you show them the love of Christ? Will you show them that they can do anything but fail? Will you be in their corner rooting for them when they're feeling like they can't do it? Will you do what God called you to do? Or will you succumb to the hate that God speaks that we shouldn't walk in? Adding value to the life of others. I want you to evaluate your life today and see where you're at. Evaluate your relationships. Evaluate your thinking. Evaluate your motives. Evaluate yourself. Only you can do this. I had to do it. And I had to look at my life. I had to look at the people around me. And when I thought about a person, I had to think about that person and my relationship and how it's working. Is it working? Does this person really care about me? Do they really love me? Do they really support me? Do they encourage me? Do they help me become the person that God called me to be? And if not, I don't care who you are. I have to cut you off. Why do I say that? I say that because in order to be who God called you to be, you have to have the right people in your corner. You have to understand that if you got people that's sucking everything out of you, that just are taking from you and taking from you, they're not adding for you, they're not praying for you, they're not doing, you have to reevaluate. You have to ask yourself the question, is this person supposed to be in my life? It may just be for a season. People aren't in our life to be in our life forever. There are some people that are seasonal to be in our life. And it's okay. You don't have to love them any less. I'm not telling you don't speak to them. I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you to cut them off and just leave them for the dogs. What I'm saying is that's not somebody that you want constantly in your life. You can speak. You can even go out to eat. You can you pray and ask God to give you wisdom on how to be in that relationship. But you got the people that's the closest to you, that you talk to on a continual basis, you want that person to add value like you need to add value to them and not just be sucking the life out of them, but giving them life and teaching them what you know and how you can help them, how you can add value to their life. Is somebody in your life that's just existing there, just hanging around to see to spectators? You need to evaluate your life. Start fulfilling your true purpose. Understanding that the connections in your life matter. If you want to go where God wants you to go and do the things that God wants you to do, you have to understand that the people that are surrounded by you, their connection matters to you. Let me finish this scripture and then I'm going to, Lord, I'm not even going to be able to finish it. Let me see. I don't finish this section of the scripture. All right. Um, honor. We talked about never lagging behind in diligence. A glow in the spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord. Are you hanging around people that enthusiastically, enthusiastically serve God, that are excited, that are happy to serve God, that you guys have that in common? Are you around those kind of people? 
consistently rejoicing in hope because our confidence is in Christ, steadfast and patient and distressed, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance and strength, contributing to the needs of God's people, pursuing the patience of hospital hospitality. Are those the people that's surrounding you? Or is it the complete opposite? Only you can answer that question. Only you can do the self-evaluation that I'm talking about. Only you know who's in your life that's for you, that's against you, that love you. My question to you today is will the real you please stand up? Will you stand up and be who God called you to be? Will you stand up and walk in your greatness? Will you stand up and be who you're supposed to be and called to be in this world? Will you show, excuse me, the love of God like God wants it shown in the world? Will you let people see you and see God? Or will you people do, or will people just see you? Will they just see Talana? With all her weaknesses, with all her flaws, with all her whatever. I want people to see Christ when they see me. I want people to see hope. I want people to see joy. I want people to see love. When they see me, they say, oh, change is coming. Here comes change. Change is coming. Not because I'm so great, but because of the great God that I serve that lives on the inside of me. That makes me valuable to the kingdom of God. And that's how you have to see yourself. I have decided that Talana is standing up and she's not taking a back seat to nobody no more. No more. My days of lack and not enough is over. I choose to be who God called me to be. And I be it now because now is coming my life. Will the real you please stand up and be who God called you to be? Amen. Amen. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I appreciate you. I pray that you share this on your timeline. I pray that you tag somebody in this video. And if you are watching the replay, hashtag replay. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you're following me on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. And I think that's it. Follow me on YouTube. You can follow me on YouTube. Um, oh, thank you so much. Follow me on YouTube. All of my videos. Last week, I did a series on the power of love. Watch your mouth. Go back and watch it. I promise you it will add value to your life because what you speak is what you're going to have. The week before that, I talked about the power of love. Um, I think I started with the power of love that week. So you want to go back and watch it. I have tons of videos on there that you can watch. It'll add value to your life. Go on there. Watch it. Leave your reviews. Let me know. Inbox me your comments, your questions, whatever. I'm available to you. I'm here to serve you. I'm a life coach, a certified life coach. And I'm, I'm, I'm all about transformation and becoming who God wants us to be. So what I would ask you to do is subscribe to my email list. Go to Lady T Talks. That's L-A-D-Y-T. L-A-D-Y-T. T-A-L-K-S. And my thing is getting ready to die. So hold on one second because I don't want to, I don't want to lose you during my announcement. So hold on guys. One second. I forgot to charge my thing over the weekend. So... Now, I got to reorganize my thing here. Sorry, guys, bear with me. Give me a second here. I'm going to get it together. Pray for a sister. <laughs> We're going to do this. We're going to do it. All right. Anyhow, come on. Work. All right. There we go. I think that's it. Sorry, guys. All right. There we go. So, uh, subscribe to my email list, ladyttalks.com, L-A-D-Y-T-T-A-L-K-S.com. Every single morning, 5 a.m., you will get an inspirational, motivational email from me. Um, just encouraging you, helping you through your day. So you want to subscribe to my email list. When you do that, you're going to get an email from me that's going to have my county link and welcoming you, letting you know a little bit about me. Um, at that point, you can schedule your um, free 30-minute clarity call with me. I am here to serve you in any way that I can. If you just need to talk, if you need some direction... All you got to do is um, click the link in my bio and you can get your free 30 minute call with me. Subscribe to my email list so it comes right to you. If you don't um, subscribe to my email list and you still want your clarity call, you can do that by just going to my website, going to the link in my bio and going to my calendar link and just scheduling your call. I'm here to serve you, to help you live your best life. So you want to do that. So schedule your clarity call with me today.
If you have not gotten a copy of my books, you want to get your copy today, I promise you. What did I tell you? If you take 30, 60, 90 days of intentional focusing on changing your life, I promise you your life will go in a different direction. So you want to get my devotional. It's a 31-day devotional. 31 days, your life will look different if you apply the Word of God, if you study the Word of God, if you pray. This book will help you do that. It is power-packed with scriptures. It has prayers in there for every day. 31 days, your life will change. $12. You cannot beat that. The link is in my bio. Go there and order your copy. This is my 90-day um, journal. So you want to order this. This helps you focus on changing your mindset, the power of your I am affirmation. Every day, I am who are you? Say who you are. Change the course of your life. Change your direction. Journal about it. Write your gratitude. Write, get, get it out of your head and on a paper. Write your dreams down. I don't care how you use it. You want to do it to change your mind. It's Mornings with Lady T. Journal. The link is in my bio. All you have to do is click it and you'll see the picture of the books together. This is 15. This is 12. Together is 22. You can save $5 and I will send you a signed copy. It can be shipped to Kenya. Yes. I'll ship it out today. So order it. Go into the link in my bio. Order your copy today and I will mail it out today and sign it for you and send you a free gift as well. So, hey, good morning. Um, so you want to make sure you order your copies today. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Um, I have my, I have programs. I have so much that I can do to just help serve you. So please, please, please check me out. Go to my website. See what I'm about. See what I have to offer. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to encourage you and I'm here to help you Stand up and be who God called you to be. Amen? Amen. If you want to sow a seed, this is good ground to sow it in. I have all my ways to sow today, so I'm proud of myself. So you can do it through Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo at Money Sign for Cash App, Lady T Talks, at for PayPal and Venmo, Lady T Talks. I've made it very easy. Lady T, L-A-D-Y-T, T-A-L-K-S. So Cash App is Money Sign. PayPal and Venmo is the at sign, and that's how you can find me or Zell at late at Talana Allen one at yahoo.com. So that is the ways you can sow seed into my life. I promise you it is good ground and you will be blessed for it. If you receive of the things of God, you should sow a seed. So today is your opportunity to be blessed. And if you don't have a home, tune in every morning, tune in every morning. If you do have a church home, you can get the word. I'm going to just inspire you and help you and teach you how to live the life that God designed for you to live. That is my desire to do. So subscribe to my email list. Get your copy of my books today. If you have any problems with any links with anything, all you have to do is inbox me and I will help you out. All right. I love you guys. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word on today. I thank you and praise you for those that tuned in. Bless them, God. Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. I ask you that you will seal the word in our hearts and minds because the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. And I come against and bind him now in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare that he cannot steal the word because it is sealed in our heart and mind that we will stand up and be who you called us to be, walk in our most holy faith, walk in the things that you called us to walk in. I bind the hand of the enemy, cover your people with your blood, watch over them. And if they don't know you in the pardon of their sins, no man can come unless you draw them. So draw them to you, God. Send somebody in their life that can speak the life of God. Help them, oh God, to seek your face, oh God, like they've never sought it before. And bless them, oh God, for tuning in today. Prosper them in all areas of their life. Meet whatever need they stand in need of today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in every single day, Monday through Saturday. I am live at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You want to tune in Monday through Friday. Monday through, well, I'm, I'm about to go Monday through Friday. But, um, but definitely Monday through Friday, you want to tune in at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I promise you that you won't be disappointed. I promise you that you will get a word from the Lord that will help you live the life that God designed for you to live. Amen. Amen. And if you agree with anything that I said today, tune back in tomorrow, share this video with somebody, tell somebody that I come live every single day and I come on here for your transformation. What I teach you, I actually live. What I teach you, I actually put in the, in the, in the action in my own life, because I don't want to be somebody that comes on here and preaches and busts hell wide open. I want to come on here and show you how to live it out, how to walk it out and how to talk it out, because that's what God has called me to do. And I'm here 
for you. Amen. I love you guys. Have a smile upon you is my prayer. Make sure you order my book. Make sure you subscribe to my email list and make sure you sow your seed today. All right. Love you guys until tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You have an amazing day on purpose. Bye-bye.